All right, I'm going to show you how to create a fixed choice question in a conjoint survey within uh, Qualtrics. Um, so when you start a new conjoint survey, um, first you have to go to overview and you have to define your levels and your attributes. So I'm going to assume at this point you've already done so. You have things like price with different price levels and other attributes. Uh, in this example, I have, uh, I'm working with cars, so I have fuel economy, acceleration time, and then I have two different powertrain options. One is um, gasoline and one is electric. All right, so when you go back to your survey, Qualtrics is gonna populate your conjoint questions dynamically for every respondent according to the design of experiment that's been created inside Qualtrics. So it just says your conjoint questions are going to appear here. Um, this is just where they're gonna show up in your survey. So if you wanna have a fixed question before or after this section, um, I recommend doing that by just copy pasting the HTML code from your preview. Um, so this is how I do that. I would click preview and then I navigate to these choice questions. So I've already done that here. Uh, this is my preview. Um, and so you can see here, this is my table uh, of one of my conjoint questions. And I wanna take this whole table over and the idea is I'm just gonna copy this over, put it in a blank uh, text page and then I'm gonna change the attribute levels to, to the ones I want. Um, so to do this, uh, what I wanna do is actually copy the code behind this. So if I right click and hit inspect, it's gonna pull up the HTML code uh, for this page. Uh, and I'm using Google Chrome, by the way, so this might look different in other browsers, but in Chrome, if I, uh, it by right clicking and hit inspect, it automatically finds where in the code this, this section is. Um, and so this whole div, which has this title and this table, is all under this one um, HTML object. So I'm going to hit right-click here and hit copy, copy element. So that's going to copy all the code that's used to display that table. Uh, and then uh, let's say I'm going to put mine here after, after my conjoint questions, create a new block, and then just create a descriptive text. And in this text, uh, this is where I want to put this code. So go to the HTML view first of all, and then you can hit paste. So here's all of the code that I copied over and it's creating this table. So this is the exact same thing as, as this table here. Now all I wanna do is I, I can change these levels by actually just clicking within, um, you know, I don't have to actually change the code anymore, I can just change the values directly to whatever I want. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you might use a fixed choice question. Uh, one that I'll often use it for is sort of an attention question. So I'll make one of the three options the obvious choice, a sort of dominant choice, and then I'll see if respondents are actually gonna choose that one. And if they don't choose it, that's a signal to me that maybe this person wasn't paying attention or maybe they just you know, didn't understand the choice question. So here I'm gonna uh, make choice two my, my dominant choice. So I'm gonna make it the lowest price. So let's make this one higher. Uh, let's say fuel economy is going to be a little bit higher on this one. Let's make it 30. So it's better than the other two. Uh, let's make it the fastest car. So it's six seconds uh, acceleration time. So now it's it's better than any of these other two. And here I have three my, my different powertrains. I want them to all be the same in this case. If I have a discrete uh, sort of non-continuous attribute, the best thing you can do is just make them the same. So they'll basically just ignore this this attribute. Now to get this exact picture over, uh, one I, I actually will need to go back into my HTML code. Um, so if I go to HTML view, it, it's hard to, to see it through here, but if you hit um, Control F and look for find and you this back bracket IMG, that's the uh, HTML code for an, an image. You'll see that three of them show up. Uh, so this is the source for each uh, each of those those images. So the first one is the gas one, that's the one I want. So I'm gonna copy this whole source link right here. And then I'm gonna paste it down here on this, this last one, which was the uh, the graphic for the plug. Now, there you go, I replaced it. There you go, I have three, three gas. Uh, now, this is sort of a hacky approach. One of the biggest problems with this approach is that this doesn't actually create a choice question. Um, these bullets down here are really just the images of the bullets. I just copy pasted them over, um, so I can, I you know, I can like delete these things. They're not going to be recorded um, as a choice. So if someone selects number two, I'm not going to be able to know that. So what I actually have to do is um, is 
make this a, a, a choice question, a multiple choice question. Uh, and I can ask them to make a choice here, choice number one, choice number two, choice number three. And I can make it a uh, horizontal position so that it sort of uh, is underneath this uh, table here. But it's not going to be perfectly aligned uh, with the table in the actual choice questions. Uh, you can make these a, a little closer by getting rid of this bottom row. So if you go back into your um, into the HTML view of the text, you can get rid of this last uh, row, which is right here, TR. This is all just a bunch of spaces now. So this last uh, starting TR and then backslash TR, that's that last row. So you can delete that. And it'll 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 drop that bottom row, um, and so now my choice one, two, and three are somewhat aligned underneath it. But um, it's really not a perfect solution. Uh, you also might want to change this top text here. I have you know one of six, so uh, depending how you're using this, you might want to just uh, change this text so that it makes sense that you know whether this is the first choice question or not, or you're using it as a practice choice question. Then maybe you maybe you want to change this to something like you know choose one of these practice choice questions. Um, so unfortunately, it's not going to look uh, perfectly aligned, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of a hacky approach. So this is my fixed choice question, um, and I've put it here after my main conjoint questions. Uh, I can either do that after or before, but if you want to do it this way, where I'm just copy pasting over the code, you can really only do it before or after. If you wanted to put a fixed choice question within these, these conjoint questions, all right, if you wanted to let's say, make the second question that everyone sees the same. Uh, that's a little more involved. Um, so here's how you would do that. You actually have to go in and change the design itself. So you have to go back to overview, go to your attributes, modify my attributes, advanced, and then you can see this little import export. So here you can upload a customized uh, design that Qualtrics is going to follow when it shows those content questions. So if you hit export uh, choice design, you'll download this file called design.csv. I've already done it, so I'll uh, open it up here. And so this is what that design file looks like. You have the question set, which is the, the person, uh, respondent number one here in this case, and then number two. Uh, the question that they're seeing, so the first choice question, the second one, third one, and so on. And then the alternative here, which they label choice, so choice one, two, or three. Uh, and then here's your four attributes. And so the, all they're showing is the number, which is the, the level of that attribute. So this is you know price level three, uh, fuel economy level one, acceleration time level two, powertrain level one. So that's how you interpret uh, these columns. So if I want to go in and replace you know the second choice question here with a fixed design, so I make these all the same, and I want to do that for every single choice question, uh, I would recommend doing that in R. This is a little more involved. So I'm going to show you uh, how I did it uh, by opening a, a file in R Studio. So what I've done here is first I've loaded my Tidyverse, uh, and then I'm reading in this this um, design CSV file that I'm just calling it uh, DF. So you can look at it, um, and that's that same uh, file I was just previewing. Um, the attribute names are the same ones from your names here. So if you have a long name like I have here, I have acceleration time. It's, it's kind of a mess to work with in R. So I'm just going to quickly rename these to some simpler names. Uh, but I'm going to actually store these original names because I'm going to have to restore it to this, this name uh, when, I, when I import it again. So I'm going to store those original names and then I'm going to rename this data frame. Um, so now I have a little bit easier names to work with. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to create my fixed design. So what I've done here is I've created a, a, a simple data frame. I'll just run it so you can see what it looks like. And you'll see I only have three rows, choice one, two, or three. And here I'm defining what I want my levels to be. Um, so I have these four attributes, and I'm just setting the levels here, one, two, or three, or however many levels based on what I've defined in my uh, survey. So here I've chosen my second choice to be the sort of dominant case. So it has the lowest price, the highest fuel economy, the lowest acceleration time, which means it's the fastest, and uh, the, all the powertrains are all the same. So I've created this simple data frame, and what I want to do is go into this main one, and I want to replace every choice question number two, I want to replace it with, with this. So the way that I want to do that is first, I'm going to create a subset 
uh, where I've only got question two uh, from this whole thing. So I'm going to I'm going to take out everything. Uh, I'm going to take out only question number two from every single respondent. So here I'm just saying df and then filter question question number two. So it, it looks like this. And then I'm going to actually drop these attributes because I'm going to and ultimately I'm going to replace all of them with my fixed choice. So I'm saying select and then I'm saying minus. So drop everything here, all these attributes. So what I end up with is a three column data frame that has the indexes for the questions uh, and the choices. And then finally, what I'm going to do is a left join. It's going to join based on this column choice. Uh, so if I run this whole thing, you'll see now that my DF for question two, I have the same three choices um, for every single question set. So for person number one, question number two, uh, the alternatives are going to be these three. And then they repeat again for you know person number two, and so on. So I've replaced everything for question two. All I've got to do now is take this and tack it onto this original data frame. So here I'm creating a new data frame I'm calling DF new. I'm filtering out the questions for everything except number two. So here I'm dropping question number two because I'm going to replace that. And then I'm tacking on these new one that I created, this, this data frame of all these question number twos. I'm binding it to the end, that's bind rows. And then finally I'm gonna reorganize it. I'm gonna rearrange it so that the, the format comes back up in the original way where it was question set, then question, and then choice. So here I've got my new data frame and I've replaced question two with this fixed choice. So these three rows for question two uh, are going to match my fixed choice, and that's going to be the same for every single person. So now I've I've created my new data frame, and all I have to do is uh, just restore those original names and then save it. So here I've I've renaming my my df new again to the original column names. There they are, and I'm going to save it. So I go back to Qualtrics and hit um, import my design, and it will uh, upload that new one. So now when I run my survey, uh, down in this section where these uh, conjoint questions get automatically created, it's going to display the same choice question for every single person for question number two. Um, so, so that part is a, that's the, a much more involved way of creating a, a choice question that's, that's fixed for everyone. Um, but you know, just putting that question at the beginning or the end is, uh, is another, another way to do it that's a, a lot quicker and a little easier to, to implement. Okay, so that's two different ways to put in a fixed choice question in your conjoint uh, in Qualtrics, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments.